Hi guys, so is the union unsalvageable or can the Labour Party, the Tories and the Lib Dems convince the people of Scotland to give the UK another chance? BBC Scotland held a question time format where they invited the audience to speak and question members of a panel. I think these two men who were in the audience perhaps explain better than I ever could the problems facing unionists in Scotland. While a referendum isn't front and centre at the moment, what these two men say should be extremely concerning for the parties I mentioned before. For myself, I would agree that the union is unsalvageable. I've grown up in, in a majority of a Conservative administration um, with the farce that was Brexit of Scotland being dragged out of the EU against its will. And then as well with the Partygate scandal, Westminster has been the face of the union. And for young people growing up in Scotland like myself, I've seen that the union is broken. They're not doing what's best for Scotland. OK, I wonder to raise two points here that he raised. First of all, of course, Brexit. Uh, the people of Scotland did not vote for Brexit, they voted to remain. But at the same time, businesses in Scotland suffer the consequences of Brexit. Now, what's interesting also when it comes to the Tories. So, of course, uh, the Tories in Westminster support Brexit, but it has been very difficult for Tories in Scotland to defend Brexit, basically. What they've been trying to do is say, yes, it's a problem, but don't worry, we're going to work through it. Um, it's very difficult because also many of them, I think Douglas Ross, the, the leader of the Scottish Tories, he voted to remain. He's not a Brexiteer. He has attempted to defend Brexit, but I think he understood at the time, look, this would be bad for Scotland. And I, I think a majority of politicians in Scotland understand that Brexit is a mistake even the Tories. Now, of course, he talked also here about the, um, the, the, the Westminster problem. He has grown up, this young man has grown up seeing uh, Tory after Tory after Tory government. He sees at the moment Boris Johnson with an 80 seat more or less majority. There's no input from Scotland. Even the Tories in Scotland have very little influence over Boris Johnson. So what influence can the SNP, the biggest party in Scotland, what, what influence do they have in Westminster? Pretty much zero. When Ian Blackford stands up to ask a question of Boris Johnson, he's basically insulted. This does not bode well for the union. Boris Johnson is the, sim is the, the front of the union. Westminster is what... Uh, people in Scotland see when they think of the union. Now, if, if it changed, if Keir Starmer were to become prime minister, um, unless the SNP had some role in his government, I don't think this rot would disappear. So it's, think about it for a moment. There are parties that are pro-union, not the Tories, the Lib Dems and the Labour Party, who have a very difficult time trying to explain how, yes, Westminster is a disaster, Boris Johnson is a disaster, uh, he has an 80-seat majority, he can do whatever the hell he wants, um, but you need to see that as beneficial. I think it's an uphill struggle. I think that the union is over. I think every week we look at PM questions and we see how they treat each other over the floor, how they disrespect one another. Um, I think with, I agree with Carl that change is needed, but I don't think it's possible in the current system. I think the only way to change it is through an independent Scotland where we have the opportunity to create something from the ground up that actually works for the people of Scotland. So I think he's right here. Unless there's massive reform in Westminster, um, nothing is going to change. Because if the Tories, if Boris Johnson has an 80 seat majority, he can do whatever the hell he wants. If the Labour Party come in, and unless they have, unless they form a coalition with the SNP, if they form some some sort of coalition without the SNP, then this is going to marginalise Scotland even more. Westminster is English focused, and that's understandable, because the majority of the of the the population live in England, so of course Westminster is going to focus more on English issues. But by doing that, it's going to drive a wedge between uh, England and Scotland. 
there's no other way around that unless as this man has pointed out you level it and restart from scratch but there isn't any real uh, appetite in the Labour Party or the, the Conservatives to do that. The Labour Party may eventually support proportional representation, which would massively change things, but that takes time. It takes political effort, and I don't see that at the moment. And even if it did come about, it could come, out, it could come at a time when it's too late for the union. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.